So yeah, welcome to the Total Recall Show. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm Matt Zioli. And I also have a comic called The Witch Man, which recently had a successful Kickstarter campaign. Go to patreon.com and search Tom Scholey. Listen to my music at speedrunmusic.bandcamp.com. So Matt, we... Uh, went to the toy show. Amazing toy show, great time. Picked up picked up some good finds. You, Becoming a regular event. Yeah, a regular thing, yeah, a couple times a year. I mean, we sort of have different perspectives on things, different types of things we're looking for. So one of my the first pieces I'm going to show off here on the Total Recall Toy Talk is Mind Wipe. Now, he's a headmaster from Transformers. Yeah. Don't have to tell you that. Right. And um, uh, it's, this is a knockoff. Is it a knockoff? Yeah. yeah. I went I mean, in going, going in to it knowing that. You knew that. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, knockoffs can be very expensive. Yeah. You know, it's not... Um, it, it, I, I'm sort of blown away by the whole knockoff thing because it's like, I assumed there were just that many floating around. And so, but like, there are not enough <laughs> old Transformers from the 80s and 90s floating around to satisfy demand it's just it's a, it, it you know because because it's an ip or whatever that has only grown in popularity yeah. and it never diminished like the people <laughs> that were into it in the 80s are still every bit as into it so they're not parting with no. their collection and then there's only been like generation after generation of, of new people coming in so this um i knew going in what what i was getting into this box is i mean like pristine it's mm -hmm. great um, I'm not sure folks can tell us out there if there's been a legit G1 reissue ever produced of this. Because mm -hmm. we've seen a couple of different Transformers out there be made. But um, the box is great. I, I was doing some research and I found you can tell this is a knockoff with if this there's a particular square. It should be purple. Okay. And the, these like lot numbers are high and like... But, but I mean, there's the, the points are on the back, mm -hmm. like... Yeah, you, you like would never whole... know. And, and a lot of, like, you know, some of the toy stores, the secondhand toy stores around town and stuff, like, they'll have a thing on it saying, knock off. And, and like, my mind's blown. I'm like, how do you know that? And I, I ordered, like, a Devastator once, and I was like, yeah. how come the instructions are weird, uh, the stickers are weird, the, you know, like, it, there was all kinds of things that, like, it was, it was more or less devastator but there were just like little things that were off yeah. and sometimes i had to like file off bits to like make it fit together you know yeah like i mean the pieces are one everything's one to one there was just some factory stickers that should have came on it yeah. that i had to apply mm -hmm. and um the the joints are a little stiff on it the other the other thing with the devastator is like the stickers weren't cut so you had to like cut the stickers yourself. There, it oh, had the sticker no. sheet, yeah, yeah, but there were no cuts where you could just peel them off. You had to cut them. I had a headmaster of, of Skull Cruncher when I was little. It was like mm -hmm. one of my favorite toys. But I guess since I was little, I thought it was like the most densest and heaviest object yeah. known to man. This is a little uh, light. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's not bad though. No, no, bad. no. Yeah. I wish I had one to compare. Um, but... Uh, I, Mind Web was one I all, always wanted to get because when I got Skull Cruncher when I was little, I remember seeing Mind Web on the shelf beside mm -hmm. him, and I I didn't know for a long time he was called Mind Web. I was like, I remember that bat. There was yeah. that bat. I just kept yeah, they, the and, bat. and they had like a Bella Lugosi Dracula version of yes. Mind Web that, that came out somewhat recently from like Has Labs or something. At at the toy show, somebody had it was like a devast a knockoff Devastator, but it was like. No, it was it was like a super obvious knockoff. It was you know just kind of like weird colors <laughs> in a blister pack, and then like the blister pack, it looked like something from like you know like a dollar store when we were kids. <laughs> you know, it was like it, like it, it, there were the the sort of art and the backing board and stuff. But I thought that might actually be kind of a cool thing to own because you could just sort of display it as a complete. A completed yes. devastator because like if you tried to play with it i'm sure it would crumble to dust <laughs> but in that blister pack you can just sort of see it see in it. all its glory um and what what an object devastator is when he's yeah. together he's, he's like a little on the small side like because again i never saw an intent like a completed devastator until i was an adult so i had it built up in my mind as this like you know giant like looming thing so when i finally got devastator i was a little bit like oh okay yeah okay when I was little, he, I thought he was taller than I was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the thing I like about the Headmasters is they kind of harken back to Diaclone. 
where all of a sudden there is like kind of a little guy who's like part of the action. Yeah, like there's the head that comes off and they did a re-release of of this um of Mind Wipe from Hasbro, but it was smaller proportions and a smaller headmaster. Mm -hmm. I, I I need my uh Transforming robot heads to be like hardy, like this, yeah. like shot glass mm -hmm. size. This is yeah, a, great color. Is the dream? Like mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Like like, and the price was right on these. It was um, yeah. uh, comparative to like what's on eBay. So sure, yeah. And 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 you know, you're not gonna. It's gonna be hard pressed to find like we saw some transformers that they've been loved. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so he has nary a scratch on him. But I always wanted Mind Wipe, and I'm so glad we got them uh, from the Total Recall uh, mm -hmm. Museum of Toy Right, Holland. yeah. I'll show another piece here. This is my first, uh, one, like, it's Grapple. Mm -hmm. He was my first G1 Transformer. Um, I have a Grapple currently with, um, no, like, the crane is missing, and his mm -hmm. uh, head is gone, but and his hands are gone. But, um, th yeah, this one, I feel like this one is, it, if it's a knockoff, it's... Pretty, made pretty darn much good. better than um mind wipe and but i feel like he is a um possibly like a reissue out of box yeah like yeah i mean this yeah see this comes out because like sometimes the knockoffs this will just be like a solid yeah. piece you know so it feels great yeah. and there I did yeah, notice the great. original doesn't have this, the Autobot logo on the front of it. Mm -hmm. It's a nice design too. Like you think about uh, like some of the G1 Transformers are like so underwhelming in person. Cause it's like you have them built up as the characters and, and then when you hold it, but that one, it's kind of like a cool looking robot. Like it doesn't look like, you know, just like a car that's been, you know, kind of yeah. vaguely humanoid shape like this this actually has some some nice detail to it and 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 uh nice proportions always always wanted um you know to now who is the red there's like one a transformer that's that same shape but red he's a fire truck fire truck yeah he's got like um, hook, or, hook yeah i can't remember his name or, yeah ladder or something. ladder hook and ladder, hook and ladder. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Backdraft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kurt Russell's head is yeah. in. in... But yeah, th this might be my favorite, this one coming up. Okay. This is a piece that I've wanted for a long time. It is from the Dark Knight Collection, the Joker Cycle. Oh, And it's purchased at Hills, where I saw Mind Wipe mm -hmm. on the show. That is fun when you, when you get one with like a, a Hills tag on it. So this was featured in the commercial. Like I had the uh, figures from this Dark Knight Collection line. I had the Joker where his face turned a uh, different color mm -hmm. and he could fly away in his like helicopter back. Yeah, where it's like, uh, g yeah, getting his makeup melted off or whatever, yeah. But it's the Joker cycle. Mm -hmm. And it's great because like the wheels are awesome. It stands up really nicely mm -hmm. on its own and the face fires off. Yeah, that's cool. It <laughs> launches. Yeah. Here goes some 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! Or like yeah. No, that's a that's a great gimmick. And um, if, if I had known about that toy, I probably would have put it in superpowers because I was trying to get like as many kind of like fun, crazy vehicles. And I did have like Joker had like his sort of Joker army, and then he had you know like the Joker, Joker mobile tanks and stuff that like tank. that, and uh, and hovercrafts and stuff. But like some motorcycles, that's awesome. Yeah, I, and I've never seen that in a comic either. Like there's been some some crazy Joker vehicles in comics. I never saw a Joker cycle. I think it's it's like way overdue. Uh, um, uh, I've won this forever. And this thing, we were we always talk about like devaluing. Mm -hmm. Like this was literally when I opened it, it had, it was mint in the box. Well, yeah, there was a, cause there was a table that it was all Batman theme, you know, in the box, in the package on, you know, and, and prices were pretty good too. This, so uh, <laughs> this is actually, I got this for substantially less. I'm seeing this going on eBay for like over $70. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got this very, very, very yeah. cheap. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the new Ghost Rider. Oh yeah, yeah. Motorcycle that was recently. Yeah, yeah, you have that. That, that mm -hmm. that's a nice motorcycle too. Yeah, I was thinking like about rubber that when I was treads putting it together. Uh, let me show you some some of my stuff. So I mean, this is something that's current and new, but this was like in the box. I love this. Uh, you know, mint in box, and it was like five bucks for this. So what I'm a like, deal. I, I kind of had my eye on this anyway. I it's it's the new McFarlane uh, Batwing. Oh, the cockpit opens up, and it's up. just so great. And 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 then it's also got the those like little cutters. 
in the front. <laughs> You're cutting the balloons mm -hmm. free. <laughs> and like I, I got the um, I got the Supermobile when it came out because I just lo I, like I've always been a fan of the Supermobile, and it had like fists. Like you turn it yeah. and then the fists punch. And so I kind of had my eye on this one too. Uh, and so, like, when I saw it for five bucks, I couldn't pass it couldn't up. Pass it and up. it is kind of nice because, like, with the McFarland stuff, they're going for, like, classic 80s, like, superpower looks, but then trying to incorporate other stuff. So it's like, you know, in, in the 80s superpower line, that was before the Michael Keaton movie. So there was no such thing as the Batwing. There would have been the Batplane, yeah. which was a little more, like, a conventional plane looking. But this is, it's like, you got the... Um, the Michael Keaton Batwing, but then in, you know, like, superpowers or, like, 80s, retro. early 80s retro colors. and, and, and Like the, these fins on the back. The fins yeah. are great. And, yeah, this claw, and this claw that, you know, would have been, yeah, for cutting the balloons, <laughs> it's great for, like, flying down and then like, grabbing <laughs> one of the, you know, grabbing the penguin by the neck, you know, <laughs> in the air. But, yeah, I love you press the, you press the bat symbol and the cockpit pops up. So, you know, cool, you know, finding something contemporary. Because, like, at those toy shows, all the all the emphasis is on the vintage stuff. Yeah. So then if there's, like, something new, you can usually get, like, a, a good deal on it. Yeah, like, sometimes I like to <laughs> be surprised and zero in on, like, toy lines no one's, like, keeping their yeah. eye on. Like, my, uh, like, the Captain Power that I had when I was little, um, his, like, leg you know, just kind of like decayed off like the, the rubber or something. It just, you know, uh, broke just on its own. And I really loved Captain Power. So I saw like they had like a nice Captain Power there for four bucks. So I thought, I, thought like, great. I need to have a Captain, because I, I threw away my broken Captain Power. And so, you know, now he's back. Better. You know, now he's back. Batwing, the scale is perfect. So Captain oh, Power can go yes. flying in the Batwing. So yeah, he's he, uh, he looks pretty good in there. So this was the thing I was I was super excited oh about the Dungeons and Dragons Whoa. Labyrinth game. <laughs> now this is something like when I was a kid, I would have loved to have this, but there's oh, no shit. way. First of all, you know it was like an expensive electronic item when I was little. <laughs> I you know and, and and then it's Dungeons and Dragons. So. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons was verboten was in my say. house as a kid. It was satanic, satanic. panic, <laughs> of, as we've mentioned before. When I was like in college, it was like the, it, all of a sudden, you know, like I saw this at like a flea market or something, but it was kind of pricey and stuff, yeah. you know, but pricey for that, you know, pricey for a college student. <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of like, oh, I passed it up. And I, I regret, like, I've never gotten to play it before. And so I saw this and I'm like, I got, I got to take this home with me. Excellent it's, choice. It's completely intact. Wow. Um, there's, there's maybe a, like a couple pieces missing, but really all the things you need to play the game are there. Oh, so it's electronic. Shit. It even uh, came with the battery. And so it's, it's electronic. It's this little maze that you kind of like work your way through. And there's all these different sounds for your different moves. And so it's basically the computer kind of take, keeps track of like where you are in the maze and where so the dragon awesome. is and where the treasure is and, and where your opponent is and you guys like can fight each other and then where all the, all the walls are. And then um, we'll have to do an episode where we actually play please, it. Please, please. But oh so then it's got God. this little drawer underneath that has all the pieces. So there's this like really like amazing looking pewter dragon. And then there's, wow. it's a two player or one player solo game player characters which aren't you know they're 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 a little bit different they're not like just identical <laughs> characters and then there's the treasure oh, and then wow. these are like the little walls so the game is you're stumbling around in the dark in this like dark dungeon where you can't see a thing and so you like walk around and then when you hit a wall like it, it makes like a like it makes a certain sound to let you know you hit a wall and so then you take one of those wall pieces and put it down so like now you know there's a wall there and so you're searching through and then when you get like three squares away from the dragon, the dragon wakes up and then, but you, you can't see the dragon or the treasure and wherever the dragon is, that's where the treasure is wow. too. Like where he starts out, his starting point is the treasure. And so you <laughs> like work your way through. The only thing you can see is your guys. And then if you hit a wall, you put a wall. So you're kind of stumbling around, figuring out what the shape of this labyrinth is until you run into the dragon. Then you got to kind of evade him because he'll chase you and then run back to his lair 
grab the treasure and then bring it back to your little like safe spot in yeah. the maze. You're competing against the other guy for this too. And, and you can also fight each other. So That's it's so cool. super fun. Whoever owned this kept this in immaculate yeah, condition. Yeah, really great condition. And I've played it a few times. It is pretty fun. And I've played like two player games. I've played solo games. And uh, it, it, there's a learning curve to it. Yeah. When you get close to the dragon, you don't know exactly where he is. So you kind of put the um, you put the thing down where you think he is, you know, based on, you know, where, like where it was when he woke up and, and then you kind of, you're, you're, you're kind of guessing, guessing, but then as it goes on, your guesses kind of get more accurate because you get like a little more information. So super fun. The, the artwork on the, um, the icons that are face on there are so awesome. I see a skull yeah, and a yeah, sword. Yeah, and like, nice. Be because awesome. like it's early, or it's like 1980. So it's like early, early computerized board game stuff. And so there's not a display screen or yeah. something. It, the closest thing to it, I'd say, would be like Dark Tower. But And like Dark Tower had like these beautiful lit illustrations that would come on this little, yeah. that would be there on this little screen. It's not as cool as Dark Tower, but I mean, uh, pretty, you know, definitely a must have. And, and I'm glad I finally got to play Because like, again, it's interesting learning like a new game and, uh, you know, the learning curve and stuff, and you can feel your brain, you know, like, <laughs> growing. As you... The box art is, is yeah. out of sight, and there's also, we get a little bonus, some vintage KB signage on there. Yeah, there's a KB, KB it's tag. Nice, it's nice to see KB. Because it is like you're, you're, you're wandering around in the dark, and then your only information is the sound. The, That's so incredible. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. It's an, an interesting simulation of... The uh, dungeon environment, making the best of like what the technology is, because of course now you could have like a very you know perfect kind of like you know electronic thing. But, so these were the things I got at the toy show, but I picked up some pretty cool things lately. And one of the things I got to tell you, and we can maybe do a future episode about this. Um, it hasn't arrived yet, but I've uh, I've acquired a Kenner Death Star playset. <laughs> now we saw like we saw a piece of the Kenner Death Star playset at the toy show and it was you know pretty pricey or whatever but like it's a toy i've always wanted to, like i've just i've never seen it in person i've never played with it. like when i was a kid i never played with one um i had a friend who had had one and i remember like seeing the box in his garage you know they were no longer playing with it you know yeah. star wars was a little bit in the past by that point but i was like oh man that looks so cool with the that's so the awesome. trash compactor and stuff. so way. i'm finally gonna get to like you know see what this thing is like in person so that's well, on the way but, after the show i went on ebay too oh did you and <laughs> I mean, to look one up I, well, n um not that one but i i i scored some stuff that i saw some stuff show. i saw at the show it's coming some... we'll have to do another episode i got a crystal ball action figure nice. online okay a couple things first up i mean i've done a bunch of videos about these but i'm like super into these uh kind of like micronauts uh like tomi takara magnetic uh, robot characters, you know, Baron Karzan and, uh, and Force Commander. And then I did the episode about Astro Boy. Yeah. So this is, I mean, this is actually, this is a, a newer, like, re-release, I think from, like, the early 2000s of Steel Jeeg, who's, like, this, uh, you know, this car, it's like a cartoon. He's this robot. This is what the Baron Karza and Force Commander uh, figures were modeled after. Yeah, these hands are on the or a hair trigger. I would have loved that when I was a kid. Yeah. So this is, uh, if you can, if you're familiar with Force Commander or um, or Baron Karza, they ba it basically took this toy and it's it, you know it's interchangeable magnetic parts and just sort of colored it black in the case of Baron Karza and then created a new head with a face that looks like Darth Vader. There's some controversy around that of like which came first okay like, even though a lot of like the micronauts collector community doth protest it <laughs> there were plenty of images of darth vader circulating prior to baron cars showing up on the shelf there's no there's no fucking way that that baron cars <laughs> face was not made by somebody who saw darth vader first so uh but anyway this so here he is and this is jeek and this is now jeek was not originally trans lucent like this g the original jeep it was like solid but it's you, like thinking about baron karza and force commander like this guy's so colorful so and awesome uh, but when i i wanted to get this clear version because as i'm sort of expanding that collection of magnetic stuff i liked i was intrigued by the idea of being able to see like the, the sort of mechanism inside like how how it works and and with like sort of like the larger magnet inside that 
attaches to all these other, you know, these these ball bearings. I love so, that scale of that mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, just a great. So that that was kind of a fun recent thing. And yeah, like I said, it's not an original from like the 70s. Uh, it's, it's a reissue from like the early 2000s. And then speaking of reissues, uh, <laughs> Super 7 oh. has oh. this like me about that. <laughs> reissue, uh, like Shogun Godzilla, which is this like giant Godzilla, um, you know, from the 70s, which I mean, when I was a kid, I never had it, but like I knew older kids who had, and oh, it just geez. was like the coolest toy I'd ever seen. But they put out this like kind of, uh, you know, not, not, not quite as big, but still pretty, you know, pretty big version of the Godzilla. And the big features are this, you know, I love tongue. that. Oh, that's awesome. And then also um, the firing fist. Wow, that's got power too. <laughs> yeah, it, you got to be careful with it. So this is this is new. Like <laughs> you, you can you can still get this, you know, at at the retail price. Nothing disappointed me when I was a little like uh, weak firing. <laughs> Like weapons included. Those yeah. are both like uh, top tier. Yeah, you wouldn't want a kid to be playing with this. <laughs> so those those were like the two main features of the original uh, Shogun Godzilla. So then another thing, like these are things I've ordered online. And so one of the things I ordered was uh, this. It was, you know, mint in box, Go Daikin Dynaman. The price was pretty good. I, I was, pr and, and I was pretty excited to get this. Um, and Go Daikin, I'm kind of obsessed with. It's like, um, it's all the Power Rangers Megazords and things, uh, but before Power Rangers, and also wow. um, a little bit before Transformers also. So it was kind of like before Transformers really hits in a big way. They, they were packaging uh, Bandai, who, who created all the different like uh, Super Sentai kind of stuff. Yeah. They were packaging all their... Super Sentai robots, uh, and, along with some of their other stuff, for um, for like the American market, and it didn't do well because like nobody knew what they were. Uh, they look incre yeah, it looks yeah, incredible. Yeah, they're pretty great, and they're amazing toys. But again, there wasn't like a show to go with it or anything, and and so, and so they're super sought after. But so to get it in box, this is <laughs> that box know, is perfect. Yeah, condition. it was kind of cool getting a Godiva <laughs> in box. This is the guy. Oh wow! This is Dynaman. And he's pretty cool. He can he can transform. Uh, he's a little bit smaller than Denji Man. He's it, it's part of that same. Uh, I, I did a video about the Denji Man figure, but he's yeah. he's kind of cut from the same cloth from the same company. And yeah, he's got shooting stuff too. His head can shoot off. That. His fists shoot off. But when he arrived, I was kind of like I saw the box. And I'm like, oh, that looks a little smaller than I thought, because I actually um, this was before some of the nomenclature around these like these sort of, you know, Megazords or Mecha um, became standardized. So I thought I was getting a much larger guy than this. And so I, I I got him. He's still pretty cool, still awesome. It made sense why I was able to get such a great price on it because it wasn't the large one that I was thinking. Yeah. So then uh, to make up for it, I got this. So it was kind of like with strike one. I thought <laughs> I was getting incredible. the big one. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just wow. going to get one of those package. Somebody had like a package deal where you get the, what would be called the Carrier Zord. Again, this predates Power Rangers, so this is what would later be called a Carrier Zord. Um, you know, this is from Dynaman, one of the early seasons of Super Sentai. And this is Di Jupiter. This is a Carrier Zord. And inside are the pieces of the Dynaman robot. So in this orange, this is um, Dynamock, I think it's called. And it's got this little twisty thing in the back that raises, that has an elevator that raises up and down that sends Dynamock out. So Dynamock has like little wheels oh my God. on him and stuff. And he so goes that, down the ramp. Yeah, yeah, he can, he can go down this ramp. And then you can open up the other parts. And kidding? inside is the Dynamobile, <laughs> oh, well, that looks which again so cool. can go down the ramp. Feel it. It's like super heavy. Oh, see, this is what I'm talking yeah. about. Like this thing's floating off in outer space. And Di so Jupiter, dense. Di Jupiter, like the wings fold down. It's again, it's pre Transformers, uh, and then, um, and then this opens up into a little thing, and then you got this kind of like uh, Optimus Prime kind of you know truck that comes wow. out. Wow. Tom, this is in like perfect condition. Yeah, yeah. It's if you know the original toy, there's a couple pieces missing, but design-wise, you don't notice. Like it, it, it still looks really cool. So, so yeah, I, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna make a mistake the second time. So I got, I got the, the vehicle. So, and, and that's the other thing. The robots, like 
the, the, the sort of transforming, combining robots, that's like my emphasis, the thing I'm into. But when you have the carrier, <laughs> it kind of gives it like a little extra. Yeah. Um, so just to see how this, this robot, how Dynaman goes together, uh, you know, this splits into two pieces to become uh, the legs. And then you press a button here. There, there's some cool mechanisms oh, that's that pops neat. that into place. And then you can uh, fold oh, this, this down. Cool. You can see, and then you can uh, take the wheels, tuck them under, and uh, that's a great gimmick there. This transforms so nicely. Yeah. Like, well, that's the thing. I I prefer these like Bandai Mecha. I prefer these to Transformers. They they're I, I think they're just like better designed. Uh, they're and, and and also like the for the era oh. they're like he, they're larger they're heavier there's more metal involved uh, I think the transforming mechanisms are a little more ingenious and so that Clever. those are the legs and then uh, and I also like um, that they're kind of like imaginary vehicles rather yeah. I mean there are a couple seasons where the vehicles are like a little more you know, realistic, real life, but I like these kind of more like sci-fi kind of, yeah. And, and so this one, you fold this part down and then these wheels in the back, you kind of fold them over the back. And then this part's really cool. Um, the arms <laughs> pop out like this. So you can imagine, uh, and uh, with the arms, they also, you oh. know, the hands shoot out. Yeah, you take this guy and then uh, you plug the legs, you plug the legs That's in incredible. like that. And then, uh, and then you know, I'll form the head. It's like, okay. oh, there you go. And then uh, there's the head. So there's Dude, there's awesome. Dynamax. So yeah. So I ordered this, <laughs> thinking I was getting this. So you can imagine my disappointment. Again, this guy was not mint in box, but I mean, he's pretty pretty sweet. So I mean, I'm glad to have both of them. But this was this was what I was after. So that was uh, kind of like a cool. This is so awesome, Tom. This thing feels like 100 pounds. Yeah, I, yeah. Like hardy. It's going to survive is, a blast. This, I'm not sure what year. I think it's it's like early 80s. So yeah, like as time goes on, you know, they're not going to be like this. There's not going to be as much metal. <laughs> yeah. and so like this is this is kind of a fun season. And Dynaman, as far as I know, was the first of like the Super Sentai series to come to America. It predates... It got here before Power Rangers because it came here as like a spoof. It was, um, they took like an episode or two of Dynaman and then kind of overdubbed it with like spoof dialogue. Kind of, okay. you know, there was kind of a thing uh, in the 80s. There was like mad movies and stuff. It was kind yeah. of this trend of taking like public domain movies or movies that would be like super cheap to like get, you know, get the rights to and, and then just dubbing in like jokey know, stuff jokey, over top yeah, jokey dialogue and so that's what dynaman is but uh like i've watched that i've watched that like jokey dynaman and it's like the greatness of the show and like how much fun it is like really comes through and like the the overdubs are kind of like condescending and like kind of like oh look at this stupid bullshit but it's like this like it's awesome this, yeah. this fires right through exactly that crap. exactly if they would have just played it straight they might have had a hit like what Power Rangers became, but you know, eight years before, Prior. you know, yeah. it's so. awesome. Um, and then there's one last thing. You know, I'm kind of obsessed with Micronauts and stuff. So yeah. this is uh, this is from uh, Micro Man, which was what Micronauts was before Micronauts. This is like the Japanese version of Micronauts. Micro Man predates Micronauts, and this one uh, is is called Rescue Base. It never got like an American release as part of the the Micronauts line, and even look at the top of the box. So like every side of the box, you get a different angle. <laughs> this box is awesome. Base. Yeah, it's such a great box. But it's towards the end of Microman's like original release. And Microman eventually kind of evolves into Diaclone, which then evolves into Transformers. So this is getting close to the end of like the Microman proper. So not too long after this came out, uh, Mego in America kind of goes out of business and then there's no more um, you know, there's no more Micronauts. He's kind of lost in the in the shuffle a little bit. I see him uh, there. He's sitting in that in the seat there on the side. Yeah, it's very cool. So, so this cool. Is, this is like a super cool. Uh, and so when I got when I got this, it was again mint in package. It was 
um, all the like little like pieces and things that come with it were all like wrapped, in, you know, in the original plastic bags that they were like unpopped and stuff. There's no scuffs on yeah, this dome exactly, here. This yeah. is like a, a time beautiful. capsule. <laughs> and oh, there's also some other stuff. This oh, this was yeah. something I picked up. Um, yeah, I, I threw a couple of the other Micronaut stuff in there. This was something I picked up at the toy show. This was a, uh, this is like a Micronauts vehicle and it's got the little, uh, you know, wind up and go. We were of, running yeah. that, that thing goes real right. fast. Yeah, and, uh, but this is, and I, I think I have a couple of my Micronauts in there. And so this is, it comes with, this thing comes with two vehicles. One of them oh, is this, sick. pretty cool. Like you can, and, and then you stick missiles in here. They shoot out with, a ton of force. force. <laughs> and looking at the profile of this thing, does this remind you of anything? Yeah. Oh God, what is it? There's, there's like a He-Man vehicle called yes. like the Dragon, you know, something like that. But it, it and this it looks, obviously predates that, but it, it looks a lot, a lot like, like that. that. So, it, I mean, this thing is just so cool. And then this is the other vehicle it comes with. It's got this like little, uh, you know, and, and the Hover sticker, crab? the stickers were all on the, sticker sheet so i got oh, to like apply so all the stickers awesome. it was uh, just kind of like a really fun day and then it's got all these neat <laughs> gimmicks around it and uh this is the antenna dish which uh, you know you put in here this is a mint like it's yeah the, the little dome comes up and you can put all all your little uh characters in there and um and then it's got this thing on the side and then it's got all these dishes and all of these vehicles like shoot missiles so then you can aim at these satellite dishes and then uh, different things happen. So you hit this one with one of your missiles and then it makes this thing flip around, which uh. has this little uh, vehicle on the side. And then uh, you can also put like a vehicle in here and then um, pull this thing here. And then if somebody hits this dish, uh, it shoots the vehicle with like extreme force <laughs> out, of this, out of this door. And then the other thing, um, this takes a battery and so if you hit this satellite dish, a light goes on here. Now, the only what? thing is, um, again, this this was like, you know, mint in the box and never been played with, but I think whatever, like the power thing kind of like must have just decayed into nothingness yeah. over time. So, uh, but the light still works, but there's also a motor in here that's supposed to, you put like your different uh, micromen or micronauts or whatever in here and then it, if you hit this, then it like spins them around in like a little carousel. Um, but that, for whatever reason, that motor's not working. I mean, maybe I can tinker around with it. Yeah, there's like little <laughs> little platforms on it. And since it's, uh, you know, Microman or, or Micronauts, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, you can like mix and match the pieces, you know, put them different places and then, uh, uh, you know, and, and then mix and match them like with your vehicles. It's got these like little pegs and stuff. Look what I got here. Yeah, but so, yeah, these are like some some of the micronauts I had. Uh, I I I, I picked up one, one of them at the. Uh, yeah, take this guy. I had this guy already, but I, I picked this guy up at the toy show too. But yeah, this is this is like his little, uh, his little jet pack, and then it's got this like little switch in the back where. I love it like that. makes it makes like the things <laughs> shoot up. At, at Very the cool, and it's it's like a it's like a die cast figure, so pretty uh, pretty nice weight to him. There's a couple different like blasters like on that base, and then the vehicles have have their own bit blasters too. But man, watch this! Wow, I mean, that's like really sa sailed across the room. There's a sample of like some some you know really cool toy stuff that's kind of come into my life N recently. Nice nice collection, Tom. P great pickups. Like the things that are like your era that you're super excited about that are super nostalgic. So for me, that would be stuff like Captain Power, Superpowers, yeah. uh, you know, some of the Star Wars stuff. Like those were things that like I remember when I was a kid and I was super into. It. And so like they're very nostalgic for me. But then there's things like, like the Micronauts are like things that when I was a kid, they were already old and done with. And, but I, they kind of had a mystique to them. It's yeah. like, oh wow, like, you know, this like thing from the recent past that like older kids knew about. Older, and the, the Godzilla too, that was like something kids. an older kid had that, that he'd had a long time. It's like, ooh, what's that? And, and then, so you got that stuff. And then you got, um, and, and then also with Micronauts, you got the extra layer of like Microman, the Japanese version where it's like, you know, I, I only learned about that stuff like relatively recently and, and like watching like the old commercials and stuff. And it's like this whole other world that just looks amazing. And then there's stuff like, 
uh, you know, the Dynaman, like the, the Super Sentai stuff where it was like, I never, I don't remember any of that stuff when I was a kid. I don't remember Go Daikin or anything, but just that it's this thing that was made, you know, when I was a kid that like, so would like perfectly have appealed to me as a kid, but like, just I didn't know that. Era. Then, yeah, a different era. And then like now seeing it, it's like, well, there's like, <laughs> it's this weird thing of like nostalgia for something that you never knew about. Oh, know? I know. It is like a whole like rabbit hole to like get lost in though, because it never, because when I first started with this stuff, I was like, oh, you know what? I would like to have like the Megazord from Power Rangers. That would be cool to have. And I don't really need anything. But then once I got that, I was kind of like, okay, oh, yes. what else is out there? You, know? <laughs> you just want to keep, you know, rolling along. Because mm -hmm. like after the show, I was like, well, you know what? I did see like that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the crystal ball. And I, I picked up a couple. I'll wait yeah. to see. What it is. It is. It can get out of control very fast. <laughs> so like it's time to pump the brakes. I think. For, but I do have some cool stuff coming soon. I have. I can't wait. I have like an amazing blockbuster coming my way. That like, Holy shit. it's, it's going to be an epic when wow. it gets here. But anyway, uh, I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Star and the Solar Legion. I'm Matt Zioli. I'm also the creator of Witchman, a new superhero comic book, which recently had a successful Kickstarter campaign. You can support my Patreon. Go to patreon.com and search Tom Scholey. Listen to my music at speedrunmusic.bandcamp.com. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah, we'll see you uh, out there in, to in, yeah, Toyland. in Toyland. Yeah. <laughs>